In a dystopian world, where water is a precious commodity as foretold by an old hitchhiker, a group of survivors learns the truth that no good deed goes unpunished. Shai picks up a hitchhiking old man. Curiously, the old man wants to be dropped off at Exit 77. During their ride, he warns of the selfish black flags. Furthermore, he advises the driver to find a secluded place, fortify it, and gather supplies. Most importantly, be careful. Before driving off, Shai hands the old man an extra uniform as a gesture of goodwill. Fortunately, the driver heeded the advice because what was prophesied came true. Soon, the country was set in turmoil. Rebel groups killed, looted, and destroyed. Clean water became a luxury, and society eventually collapsed. Now, the few survivors battle for their lives every single day. While playing chess with Daoud, Asa spots a light in the distance. Alarmed, he rushes down to alert his father. Hearing the report, Shaib instructs his son to get back in position and provide sniper fire. He arms himself and his lieutenant, Kais, to deal with the threat. The two men exit the fortress warily. Beyond the fence, a woman removes her hood, pleading for help. Suspicious, Kais warns that it might be a trap. Still, Shaib attempts to save her, instructing his lieutenant to lock the gate once he's back inside. Amid his lieutenant's protests, Shaib dashes towards the woman. However, before he can grab the woman, a chain pulls her back. The leader races back to safety, but an arrow stops him in his tracks. Shaib turns back to find a man cheerfully dancing as he approaches. He trains his gun on him, but the suspicious man hides behind the distressed woman, telling Shaib to lower his gun. Shaib acquiesces, then asks what the man wants. The man introduces himself as a drifter and announces that he needs water, to which Shaib replies he'll give one gallon in exchange for the woman's release. Hearing the offer, the drifter laughs and points at the tower, saying Shaib can do better. The man shows explosive shells, offering to add them for a better deal. Shaib declines, but increases his offer to three gallons. Uncertain, the drifter looks back for confirmation. At this, Shaib points his gun and says the deal is only between them. The evil man agrees that it's just between them, promptly ending the woman's life and shoving her body towards Shaib. Distracted, Kais hurries to help, but is ambushed by another marauder. Above, Asa is apprehensive to shoot, worried at hitting a friend. Below, Shaib uses his only two bullets to shoot an old man running past. When he loses loses his advantage, the drifter shouts. Suddenly, a bandit pops out of a truck and fires a crossbow, which Shai barely avoids. With Dawood's help, Asa shoots the bandit on the truck. Kais grasps a nearby rock and dispatches his attacker. However, Shai is held hostage. As the drifter shouts his demands, a knife flies, ending his life. Asa immediately fires, hitting the knife thrower on the shoulder. As Shai and Kais approach, Musa surrenders. He explains that he and Gulbin were just looking for shelter when they heard the commotion. Then, Gulbin comes out of hiding. Musa retrieves his knife and reveals that Gulbin is Kurdish, and they can barely communicate. Asa soon joins them, worried. They quickly introduce themselves, and Asa thanks Musa for saving his father. With the danger over, Shaib invites Musa and Gulbin as guests. Mariam opens the main door. Then they pass through Zainab and Bilal's inner gate. Later, Jamal protests, distrustful of the newcomers. Asa overhears and approaches his father, expressing that he wants Musa to stay. Shaib teases his son, asking if it's Musa that he's interested in. Despite saving his life, Shaib states that they still need to be careful of the strangers. Asa retorts that being careful didn't stop his mother from dying, and that they need to do more than just be careful. They need to act. While tending to their guests' wounds, Shaib informs Musa that they are welcome to stay for a few days. If they have nowhere else to go, he offers them a permanent residency, though they must abide by his rules. Musa requests to delay the decision to tomorrow, after a night of rest. Dinner is is awkward due to the group's distrust. To ease the tension, Shaib asks Musa how he met Gulbin. He recounts meeting her after her husband was killed by rebels who deemed him unworthy of living. He smiles, saying it was fate that brought them together. Hearing this, Raya shares her own story. She recounts fighting back against rebels, causing them to pour acid on her face. Unashamed, she considers her scars beautiful. Idris kisses Raya's scars, admitting to falling in love with Raya because of her strength and confidence. Despite the world's terrible situation, situation, he's glad that they have something to be happy about. With the atmosphere more comfortable, Idris begins singing. His voice echoes throughout the forest, reaching Jamal, Bilal, and Zainab as they keep watch. While gathering water, Mariam notes Gulbin's discomfort around Musa, and later shares this with her family. She confides that she doesn't like him, causing Asa to remind her that the guests saved their father's life. As the siblings argue, Shaib intervenes, saying everything will be decided tomorrow, bidding them good night. As he leaves, Jamal reminds 
reminds him of Musa's knife. As Musa sharpens his knife, Shaib joins him, telling him that everyone stores their weapons in a locked cabinet that he only opens during emergencies. Hearing this, Musa says he will follow the rules just like everyone else and hands over the knife. Handle first. Relieved, Shaib motions to take it. Immediately, Musa points it at Shaib. With a fierce look in his eyes, he accuses them of plotting to kill him and Gulbin in their sleep. Offended, Shaib stands up and informs him that guests are expected to obey the rules. Musa starts laughing, assuring the leader that it was all a joke. He then sheathes the knife before offering it, blade first. As Shaib takes it, Musa swiftly stabs him, whispering that he should not trust so quickly. He declares him unworthy and bids the trusting man farewell. Then, Musa announces himself as the Aleph and the Ya'a, the beginning and the end. Unhinged, he declares that he's there to separate the worthy from the unworthy. Hearing the noise, the residents begin to gather. Kai sees their fallen leader and charges at Musa, but he's easily disabled. Asa and Mariam rush to their father's side while Musa tries to drag Gulbin away with him, though he's stopped by Raya. Shaib apologizes before dying in the hands of his children. Vindicated, Jamal remarks that this is the result of trusting strangers, while Mariam blames Asa for their father's death. Enraged, he snatches the weapon's key and arms Dawood and himself, hungry for revenge. However, Gulbin and his sister hold him back, stating that their father is more important. Helpless, Asa screams in frustration. Meanwhile, the evil man is already outside, retrieving a hidden bag of supplies. As the sun begins to rise, Dawood joins Mariam at the roof, comforting her as she cries. The following day, the residents lay Shaib to rest. As the siblings linger in front of their father's grave, Asa confides that he doesn't know what to do next. They've managed to stay safe, but they never had a plan. Before leaving, Mariam apologizes for blaming Asa, saying this wasn't his fault. Later, Kaiz assures that everyone relies on him and Mariam. They all expect him to take the lead now that his father is gone. Shortly thereafter, Gulbin leads Asa to wash his hands. However, no water comes out. Alarmed, Asa announces that their water supply has been cut and that they need to check the water tower. Mariam insists on joining, but Asa denies her, stating that one of them has to stay. She asks if he's still upset, and he says no. She smiles as they do their secret handshake. Soon, Asa, Dawood, and Idris make their way to the tower. Once there, Idris insists on climbing it alone. At the top, he turns the valve controlling the water, unaware of the attached trap. Below, Asa spots it too late. He warns Idris. Then he and Dawood start running. Suddenly, the base of the tower explodes. The tower slowly falls, crushing Idris as it hits the ground. Once the debris has settled, Dawood runs back for their friend. Unfortunately, he steps on a mine that sends him flying. Concerned, the residents rush out and see Dawood's mangled leg. Asa dashes to his friend's side as the residents crowd around them. Meanwhile, Raya approaches the collapsed tower, still processing her husband's death. They carry Dawood inside, tensions rising as they cope with the situation. Jamal accosts Gulbin, accusing her of hiding information. Frustrated, Asa threatens Jamal with a gun, telling him there's no reason to suspect Gulbin. Despite Mariam's efforts, Dawood bleeds uncontrollably. Desperate, Asa instructs Kais to start a fire and calls over Bilal to assist. Then, he heats a saw and proceeds to amputate his friend's leg. In another room, Raya silently grieves her husband's death. Soon, Kais walks over with a heated shovel to cauterize the stump. That night, Jamal drinks a canister of water meant for Dawood. He justifies his actions, stating the water should go to the living. Disgusted, Mariam slaps him. Jamal tries to retaliate, but Gulbin intercepts his blow. Asa walks in and states that he saw everything. The rookie leader rebukes Jamal, emphasizing that they're supposed to protect each other and not fight. He declares Jamal unwelcome in their stronghold and orders him to leave. Jamal is defiant, causing the rookie leader to draw his gun. Suddenly, Jamal attacks, and the two struggle for the weapon. The bigger man overpowers Asa and snatches it away from him. Emboldened, Jamal begins barking orders. As the new leader, Jamal states his first act is to expel Gulbin, but Asa intervenes. Addressing everyone, Jamal claims he was Shaib's advisor, making all the decisions behind the scenes. He then shows his contempt for Asa, who welcomed their enemy, and blames him for Shaib's death. He questions his abilities if he can't even protect his father. Calmly, Asa states that Jamal isn't a leader. His his father knew Jamal loves books more than people's lives and could not be trusted to lead. Asa places his forehead to the gun, 
daring Jamal to shoot. To everyone's dismay, Jamal pulls the trigger. Fortunately, the gun has no bullets. He looks at it in shame while Kais takes it away. Seeing Jamal's true nature, the group pledge their loyalty to Asa and bid the selfish man farewell. Soon, he is escorted out into the night by Asa and Kais. Once the gate closes, Jamal turns back and states that this is Musa's plan, to destroy them from within and then pick them apart once they search for water. Before setting off, he declares that they'll be seeing each other again soon. The two men agree that Jamal is correct and head back inside. Resigned to eventually having to leave the fortress for water, the residents make their preparations. The following day, Asa and Kais head out to scavenge for water. Gulbin kisses Asa on the cheek, while Raya, armed with her own spear, declares she's joining them. Respecting her desire to avenge Idris, they don't stop her as they walk out into danger. Later, Bilal and Zainab request to be relieved of guard duty, citing exhaustion. However, Mariam is unwilling to leave Dawood and the only person left is the newcomer. Hesitantly, they agree to let Gulbin take the watch. Meanwhile, the trio enter a nearby building, splitting up to search more efficiently. As they scour their respective areas, Raya feels a disturbance but doesn't see anyone. Soon after, Asa calls them over, and they rejoice in successfully obtaining some water. Upon their return home, they are alarmed to find the gate open. The men quickly secure it, but Raya hears singing and is reminded of her husband. While searching for the source, she falls through a trap hole. Raya finds herself inside a basement and discovers Jamal, mouth taped and tied up in the air. The singing is coming from a device on his wrist. She turns it off, causing Jamal to wake. Above, Asa shouts if she's okay and if there's a way out. She looks around and sees stairs leading up. The men open the hatch and survey their surroundings. The lieutenant is convinced it's a trap and Jamal is just bait. Still, they elect to help him. As Kai's unravels the cables, Jamal starts struggling harder. Asa removes the tape and they learn that his tongue is missing. Shocked, Kai's accidentally releases the cable, causing Jamal to fall. Hearing something strange during the fall, Raya removes his boots and is horrified at the sight that greets her. Seeing Jamal's condition, Kai's warns their leader that they won't make it into the fortress if they drag Jamal along. The rookie leader is torn between helping and leaving him. Eventually, he apologizes then proceeds to end the exile suffering. In his final moments, Jamal sees Musa watching them from above. Suddenly, they hear a loud crash. Kai's runs to the exit and finds it closed. Simultaneously, a Molotov cocktail drops from above and sets the chamber ablaze. They push against the hatch, but it won't budge. Thinking quickly, Asa kicks off a railing and uses it as a level to pry open the door. The men rush out, but Raya falls when a step gives way. She shouts for help, and her leader tries to save her, but she's quickly engulfed in flames. Raya's final act is tossing their water to safety. Meanwhile, inside the stronghold, Mariam hears a shriek and she rushes to check. She sees Zainab get shot by an arrow and Musa dropping down. Still reeling from Raya's death, Asa and Kai soon discover Gulbin bleeding out. She mumbles Mariam's name and Asa dashes inside for his sister, instructing his lieutenant to tend to the newcomer. He follows a blood trail leading to a pit and sees Bilal and Zainab's broken bodies within. Asa soon discovers his sister with a chain around her neck, precariously situated at the edge of a plane wing that is balanced like a seesaw. Immediately, he rushes to the wing's center of balance. However, if he approaches to free her, she will be lowered and be hanged to her death. Then, Musa appears standing on the other end of the wing, announcing himself as an agent of chaos, freeing the world from the choking pressure of worthless people. As he speaks, he shifts his weight and forces Asa to balance his sister's life. Soon, Asa is thrust into a knife fight with Musa, where their lives literally hang in the balance. However, despite his best efforts, the agent of chaos has the advantage. Asa is sliced, thrown around, yet he still fights. He manages to bite Musa, causing the knife to drop, but Asa is thrown to the ground with it. With no counterweight left, Asa races to the edge of the wing and hangs on to prevent his sister from dying. As Musa retrieves his knife and prepares to deliver the final blow, Maria makes a brave decision. She closes her eyes and sacrifices her life to save her brother. Having accomplished his objective, Musa informs Asa that he's free to go. The rookie leader draws his gun, causing Musa to laugh. He informs Asa that during his brutal interrogation, Jamal divulged that it has no bullets. Frustrated, Asa hurls the useless weapon at him and grabs a nearby container of gas, dousing Musa with it. His smug attitude vanishes as soon as Asa takes out a flare gun and fires, setting the man ablaze. Devastated, Asa takes one last look at his sister before heading back to Kais. To his surprise, Gulbin is standing, uninjured. When he asks about Kais, she gestures to the floor below. Asa looks over and sees Kais' 
Caius's broken body. Balbin begins talking fluently, praising Caius for being a good soldier, but he's not a leader, so he's unworthy. Frustrated, Asa yells. Galbin explains that among the stronghold's inhabitants, he was the worthy one. The pretender reveals that she never doubted his capability, and he passed a test that very few can. Furious at his family's death being a mere test, Asa presses Musa's knife to her throat. However, Galbin easily incapacitates him. She informs him of a meeting place where all of her kind will soon gather. There, he can choose whether to kill her or join them. The pretender uses her pendant and carves a symbol on his neck, claiming it'll keep him safe. Before he's knocked out, her last words are an invitation to fix the world together. Days pass. Asa drinks the last of his water traversing a deserted highway, near exit 77. Night falls and he stumbles across a house in the middle of nowhere. The old man offers hospitality, knowing he was driven there by the Ya'a Aleph. Seeing Asa's confusion, he carves the symbols on his table, explaining it means the end and the beginning. Asa realizes it's the same symbol Gulbin carved onto his neck and shows it to the old man. Shocked, the old man admits to adhering to their beliefs in the past. He explains that they knew the end would come soon, and their goal was to survive and look for other survivors. Together, they will rebuild society. But soon, chaos began to gnaw at the group. Their morals changed, and so did the type of people they valued. When the phrase, the worthy became widespread, he left. The old man reveals that he knew Ace's father, that even after several warnings, he still risked returning to save his family. Early the next morning, Asa wakes up first and considers repaying what Musa had done to them. However, he notices the uniform in the corner and realizes it's his father's old uniform, the exact one Shaib gave to the old man that foretold the future. Asa spares the old man and takes his father's old uniform with him. He sets off to find the Aleph Ya'a at their gathering place, acknowledging that they may have caused the end of the world, but he vows that the new beginning will be in better hands. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.